forefathers had products in their bathrooms and hygiene practices in the 10th century which is over 1100 years ago which could so easily compete with the products that you have today now in your bathroom in your house in the 10th century they even had a wudu machine which you don't have to this very day it was mobile it was brought before a guest the guest would tap the head it looked like a peacock on a tray the guest would tap the head and water would come out in eight short spurts enough to perform wudu compare that with a sink and tap of today in the 13th century 800 years ago the likes of Al Jazeera had already made numerous clocks of all shapes and sizes. You believe that the first Big Ben is the one that's in London. That's not the first Big Ben. The first Big Ben was built by your forefathers in Fez, Morocco, Maghrib. Starbucks. The first coffee house in Europe appeared in 1645 in Venice. Your forefathers were drinking coffee hundreds of years before this as it had been discovered by a man called Khalid as he grazed his, his goats on the slopes of Ethiopia. Abu Hassan Ali ibn Nafi, nicknamed Ziryab, he was the one that introduced the concept of a three-course meal. Before that, the Europeans didn't even know what a three-course meal was. Before the 10th century, your forefathers had already laid the foundation of trigonometry and algebra. When it came to agriculture, S.P. Scott states that the Spanish Muslim agricultural system was the most complex, the most scientific and the most perfect ever devised by the ingenuity of man. 1100 years ago, your forefathers were manufacturing paper. They were building dams, they were building windmills. Allahu Akbar, Abbas ibn Firnas had made a flying machine. It was the first machine capable of carrying a human being in the air. They were designing great buildings. Who can forget the earthquake defying minarets of Sinan in Turkey, which did not even collapse even after an earthquake? Who can forget the New York of the 9th century, Qurtuba? Qurtuba was the New York of the 9th century. In the 9th century, Qurtuba had hundreds and thousands of houses, 200,000 houses. Houses had running water. Schools were free. There were dozens of libraries. The streets were paved and lit. Garbage was collected on the backs of donkeys and taken to special dumps outside the city walls. There were sewers, there was drainage in place. My friends, London and Paris, the capitals of the world at this moment in time, did not have these facilities for over 700 years after this. Your forefathers were designing surgical instruments, constructing hospitals. One Muslim alone designed over 200 surgical instruments, syringes, scalpels, and I assure you, modern instruments haven't changed much from his original designs. They were operating, treating cataracts. In the UK, cataracts are the most common cause of blindness in people over the age of 50. In the UK alone in 2005, 300,000 operations were undertaken. Allahu Akbar. Who would think that this was all made possible? as a result of the foundation of your forefather, Imam Mosley. This is why Dr. Donald Campbell, 20th century historian of Arabian medicine, he says, the European medical system is Arabian not only in origin, but also in structure. He says that the Arabs are the intellectual forebears of the Europeans. And who can deny this? The Qanun of Ibn Sina dominated the Western world for over 600 years. This was just one of his works. He composed over 276 works. Who can forget the work of Ar-Razi? His book was the most highly respected and most frequently used medical textbook in the Western world for hundreds and hundreds of years. Who can forget Jabir Ibn Hayyan? 
unanimously agreed he was the founder of chemistry. My young friends, it was your forefather who devised and then perfected sublimation, amalgamation, crystallization, oxidation, evaporation, and you can keep on naming them one by one. Who can forget Al Kindi, an all round master? The names will keep on coming to mind. The excellence will keep on coming to mind. The virtues will keep on coming to mind. The contributions will keep on coming to mind. The achievement of your forefathers will keep on coming to mind. Indeed, these were the ummatis of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They elevated the name of Allah and his Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wherever they went in the globe, whether they were traveling in some desert or in the thickness of some jungle, all of a sudden, people now, when they saw these people, or because of what they were and because of what they had achieved, my friends, all of a sudden, people now were interest, interested in Allah and His Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A fire burned in their hearts, which did not let them rest till they excelled, till they became world leaders, till they became the torchbearers, the beacons, the lighthouses and the pioneers.